Hi there, my brothers and sisters in Yeshua. All right. In this video, I wanted to go over the Antichrist spirit. All right. And Apostle Paul spoke of it, of the Antichrist spirit. And understand the Antichrist spirit has been going on or has been around since today's or the books of Genesis. It has been around since the beginning of time. For the thing is, you have to understand the Antichrist spirit is any anyone who rebels against God, anyone who refuses to obey, who refuses to completely surrender, completely be submissive, complete refuse to completely be obedient to the things of God. That's an Antichrist spirit. That's an AKA rebellious spirit. Basically, if you do not want to obey God, or you refuse to obey God, or you try to make up things to say that, to, to basically say why you don't follow God, you have an Antichrist spirit. Do not allow any want to deceive you. This is the spirit that you have. This is why when this uh, son, of, son of perdition comes, this antichrist comes. That's why I say it in my other videos that Christians who, I mean, professing Christians, not true, the true body of Christ, will receive him with joy in their hearts. Because the thing is, he will side with what they want. Yet, side, yet not siding with the things of God. But a believer, you get this. Many will say, yes, I believe in God. Yes, I believe in the Son of Christ. But I don't believe Christ to say this, which is in Scripture. And I don't believe Christ to say that, which is in Scripture. But they do not understand that they're taking the deity of Christ away. For you to take the deity of Christ away, he's no longer Christ. He's someone else. That makes you an antichrist because you're rebelling against him. Let's use a, uh, uh, an example. I spoke with one of my co-workers, I would say. And as we were walking, we were speaking. This is something that physically happened. She knows that I'm a believer or what not, but I don't push my belief on her. I allow people to come to me, and at the right time, I will speak to them if the Holy Spirit allows, okay? So we we walked, and we began to speak about religion. It just dropped into religion. I said, okay, this is a good time now. So she said, yes, I believe in God. I believe in uh, Jesus, but I don't, we got into like homosexuality. She she said that I don't believe if, if, if you love a same sex that God will kill you for that. With, when she said that, the spirit did not allow me to speak. I just kept silent and I just wanted to hear what she had to say. For the thing is, you have to understand that for someone to accept God, for someone to accept Christ, yet you deny part of his deity. But you have to understand that Christ is holy. There's no sin in him. Christ is holy. Understand that. There's no sin in him. And that goes with the Father. Not only that, does that go with the Father, that also goes with the Holy Spirit who is sent to you when you when you repent of your sins. But there's many believers that go throughout the world. They accept the Father. They accept the Son. But they don't accept the words, the commands. But you have to understand that Christ is the Word of God, which is these commandments. The Word of God is put into flesh to made a man, to made a human being. You will see a picture of Christ. So when you get, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt keep the Sabbath, thou shalt obey the, mo the mother and the father, thou shalt not put any a grave image before me. If there was a picture, if there was a, a human being, a flesh, you would see a picture of Christ. This is he. So for someone to say, I accept God, I accept Christ in the flesh, but I do not believe this, which 
scriptures were basically uh, created or made by men who were inspired by God. Or God inspired these men to write scriptures along with, but basically go along with his Holy Spirit. It's not something that they thought of, but was inspired by God because he is the author of the Holy Bible. So for one to see Christ, see all that he commands to follow him, yet say, I don't believe this one part, I don't believe this part, yet they still accept him as being a physical being. You have denied him because this is his deity. And I was going over that with one of the, someone that I knew. I gave him an example because he did not know. He's married, and I said, for example, if your wife was a tall, six-foot blonde with blue eyes and slim, and you know that's your wife, okay? This resembles Christ. But you turn around and says, you turn around and say your wife is 5'5", five five, brunette hair, brown eyes, and I asked him, would this be your wife? He clearly said no. And I told him, this is the same thing when you take Christ's deity from him. He is holy. He is pure. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You can't take away. Just because you don't want it to be that way does that does not mean that you can take it away. In your mind, you can take it away, but the thing is, with Christ, it will, still, it will still be there. Just as he said in the book of Revelation, he said his words will not pass away. He said the world will pass away. That means all things will happen as he prophesied. This world will go away. This world will, this world will pass away. But what he said and who he is, basically, will stay the same. God the Father says, I am the Lord your God, declaring that. He says, I change not. I change not. I change not. So for one, for, for someone to say they accept God, they accept Christ, but the things that Christ commands, idolatry, uh, adultery, covetedness. These people say, I don't believe this, I don't believe that. Well, you're taking away the deity of Christ. That means you don't know him. That means you, so you take away the deity of Christ and you say, I will accept that who I took him away from. This is not Christ. So you, you're basically worshiping Satan. Because the thing is, to worship Satan is to worship someone who you want. Basically, you're making up your own Christ. You say, I want my Christ to be like this. I want my God to be like this. Acceptable in my realm. No. This is this is when God lets you go. He says, if this is what you want to do to me, not accept me, but take away things that I push forward, I will let you believe that. And this is scary, my brothers and sisters in Yeshua. And this is what I plead. With the Lord, when I pray, I ask him, I tell him, I say, I will accept anything you have to say. Whatever it is, I will accept it. Help me to accept it. Because the thing is, in the beginning of my walk, a lot of things that I read in scriptures terrified me of the deity of God. But, and, and I, it, it made, some of it made me angry. But as I continued to walk, I said, this is he, and I can't change him. For he said, I'm the Lord your God, I change it not. So I said, I have to accept it. I have to accept it. If this is what he said, this is he, I will not change. This is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He sits on his throne. He's on his throne for a reason, because we are beneath him. He, he, he basically is a, a ruler. Whatever he says goes. For me to change him is basically saying that I'm above him, which I am not. So I said, Lord, help me to accept it. Help me not to change your laws, your ways, but let me accept it. 
This is when you're not deceived. This is when you're not worshiping and accepting the false God when you begin to accept the things of God. Accept him. But many people, and I mean, these are believers who say God is this, God is this, and it's especially for his physical being. No one knows how Christ looks like. I was speaking to this to one of my coworkers. Everyone's picturing Christ to be this brunette, long-haired or curly-haired to his shoulder guy with either blonde, uh, I'm sorry, with either uh, blue eyes uh, or brown eyes, narrow nose, strong jawbone to be slim. You have to understand this world has been given over to Satan, so the picture that everyone is saying that he looks like will be opposite. For in Scripture, if you read, it says that Christ had no beauty. Christ had no beauty. No beauty. So you will look at him, the eyes, the, the eyes of men in this world will look at him and say he's not attractive. You will look at him you will look at him and you will turn the other way. For scriptures when scriptures speak, scriptures is dead on point blank. You say, Yes, that is true because I've actually seen it. Scriptures say Christ had no beauty, that anyone would desire him. You will look at him. Many of you who profess yourself to be believers, if you seen Christ without Christ even saying that he is the Messiah you reject him because of his physical appearance. You will reject him because he's not what the standard of what society sees him to be. I told this to one of my coworkers. For we in this world were picturing Christ to be someone about five ten or higher. If the world is picturing him to be like this, Christ may be five five, five four. You say, Oh no, this can't be. How can this not be? How can this not be? He didn't come here to be a model. He came here to die and to give you another chance for salvation. You may say, oh, his hair is down to his shoulders. How do you not know he has a fade? How do you not know that his hair does not touch hit the top of his ear? When you say his eyes are blue and his hair is blonde, how do you not know that his eyes may be pitched black or brown? You don't know these things. For his nose to be narrow, the world sees it as that. How do you not know that he does not have a wide nose? You will look upon him and say, this, not a, this is not an attractive man. This is not a man that I would be drawn to. But yet this is Yeshua. Take your mind out of that, my brothers and sisters in Yeshua. God says, worship me in spirit and in truth. For if you worship him in spirit and truth, you will not worry about the physical. For there's this word that goes around in this worldly realm where it says, uh, it says something about beauty don't pay bills. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that is. But the thing is, if you were to put a picture of Christ, of who he really is, a physical picture of Christ, and you would have put a picture of Satan, but you wouldn't put their names. Many people will be drawn to Satan and said, this is Christ. And the other one, they will say, this is Satan. But the thing is, it's flip-flop. But you have to understand, Christ said, I'm not of this world. Not only did he say, I'm not of this world, as far as spiritually speaking, because this world is about self, Christ said, I've come to this world. I have come into this world to do the will of my Father, not myself. I have not come to the will. I'm not. I have not come to into this world to do the will of myself, but the will of my Father. But you have to understand, He basically saying, I don't blend in, physical nor spiritual. He didn't come to win a, a contest of beauty. They said He was a man of many sorrows. What was that sorrow? It was not acceptance. We accept people by beauty. Not even wanting to know what they're about, who they're about. This is Yeshua. And you will see him for who he really is at his second coming. They said they looked upon him. He didn't look like he could be a king. He didn't look like he was majesty or royalty when they seen him. But you have to understand that he is a descendant 
in the root of King David. And if we knew King David, King David was the last to be chosen to be anointed by his family. They didn't even call him out to be chosen. God chooses those who the world has turned their backs on, who the world says there's not a possibility that this person could be a king. There's not a possibility that this person could be this. There's not a possibility that this person could be that. But God says, I make that possibility. So for King David's father and mother, brothers and sisters or whatnot, says that I don't see him being a king of Israel. God says, anoint him. He's my king. So for what God says goes, God says, anoint him. He is my king. Forget what the world says. Yeshua. He told King David, your descendant will sit on your throne. Your descendant will sit on your throne, King David. And his descendant is like him. For Yeshua was someone that many despised his looks. And that he was for God. Yet what God did. God says, my son. This is the this is when the haters. This is when Satan. This is when hell. This is when the demons will shatter and tremble and fall on their knees. God the Father who created the heavens and the earth. And all things that are in it. Who controls the armies of heaven. The angels. He told his son, who the world despised, who the world rejected, he said, sit at my right hand. This is glory. This is authority. This is being uh, humble. And God is the one that exalts you. He said, my son, sit at my right hand until... I place your enemies beneath your feet. This is the same thing he did with King David. You don't have to exalt yourself. For those who are exalted in this world today, best believe it is God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, who will bring you down to humble. But it is King David. It is Yeshua. Who humbled themselves and who exalted them? The living God of Abraham. He told his son. He knew his son had enemies. He knew his son had enemies. He said, you know what? Sit right here. I will exalt you. You will take upon my name and all my glory. I will bestow before you. Sit there until I, who have all powers of the world, all powers of the earth, I will put Satan, I will put the fallen angels, I will put those in this world who rebel against me and hate you underneath your feet, and I will exalt you to be king. Not only will you be king, but you will be kings above every king. No one will stand beside you. But you, they will be below you. You will be that king above those kings. You will be that lord above those lords because I decreed. This is God putting someone. This is God exalting someone because they humbled themselves. This is what the Lord does. This is what he does. So you're taking God, you're taking Christ's deity. Why are you taking his deity? When you take his deity, do you not understand that you are an enemy of God? You're not accepting what he is, who he is. But you're saying, I don't like that characteristics. Let me take it out. And then, yes, that's the God I want. No, you're worshiping Satan if that's the case. One deity that you remove, I don't care if it's just one. You're worshiping Satan because the thing is, if you take away something that is of Christ, that is not Christ. Many people are deceived. Many people will believe 
that whatever deity they take away from Christ, that this is still he. But in the last days, you will see that this is not he. For Christ himself, Christ himself say that no one knows the Father. No one. Understand that. Underline that no one. Christ said, this came out of his mouth, and we know that he speaks truth and he speaks life. He says, no one knows the Father. No one knows the Son. The only people that know them, only people that know Christ, is those who Christ chooses to reveal himself to. Understand that, my brothers and sisters, Yeshua. Christ says, no one knows my Father. Like, for real, for real. Wholeheartedly, conversation back and forth. He says, no one knows him. No one knows me. Heart to heart, conversation, forward and back. What's your real feelings? He says, no one knows that. He said, the only people that truly knows that are those who I choose to reveal myself to, are those who I choose to speak to, are those who I choose to conversate to, are those who I choose to put forth my feelings to. Only those who have the Spirit of God truly knows God. Understand that, my brothers and sisters in Yeshua. For you have, if you have not repented of your sins, and have not received the Spirit of God. You do not know the living God. You do not know the living Yeshua. Do not allow anyone to deceive you in that perspective. In that perspective. You do not know him. Especially if you're stripping him from his deity. You do not know him. For those who truly know him are those who will see him for who he is and say, you know what, my heart needs to change so that I may accept whatever you are, whatever you, whatever your deity is, whatever your characteristics is, whatever your laws is. I need to change instead of trying to change you to fit me. I need to change to fit you. For how can he be God? How can he be Lord? How can he be master upon his throne if those who are beneath him are trying to be above him? That can never be, my brothers and sisters, in Yeshua. Pray. Seek the truth. For what I say is the truth, and this truth can be backed up with scriptures. If you don't believe me, go to God. Go to Yeshua. Ask the Holy Spirit if you have the Holy Spirit abiding, to you, abiding in you to ask if what she says is true. And it is the Holy Spirit of God who will put forth to you whether my words are true or not. Take care, my brothers and sisters in Yeshua.